it was fine. But that wasn't the most momentous moment of the wedding visit. No, no, no. I ended up in the back of a police car and got breathalyzed. Which was an experience I've never had before. And it was, uh, it was bizarre. <laughs> it was bizarre. Yeah. So, <laughs> I wasn't drinking because uh, I didn't know a single person other than my wife at the wedding. There was a good 200 people there, but the person I knew was Emma. I, I did talk to a lot of people. I ended up sat at a table full of teachers, which was really weird. It turned out the bride is a teacher, so I ended up on the teacher's table. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I was sociable. I chit-chatted. I did my thing. Uh, but when we finished, so it, we started at like 12 in the afternoon, and it, I, at 10 p.m. I was fucking done, right? And Emma could tell. I didn't complain. I was a good boy. I wasn't like a toddler. I was a good boy, but when it got to 10 p.m., I was fucking done. I was so done. And I was like, can we go? Because they started playing Frozen, like Disney. They had a Disney dance-off. So when, it, when they started singing about Bruno, I thought we're not allowed to talk about it. But apparently, flagrantly just throwing, throwing the rules in the fire, they started singing about Bruno, which was rude, in my opinion. Uh, I was like, can, can, I, can I be done? Can I be done now? And I just kind of gave her the look, which was like, please, please get me the fuck out of here. Like, I could be doing my uh, Beast Tribe quests right now. Honestly, like, servers reset, you know? I could be doing so much stuff. Uh, so, <laughs> she obviously recognized it. Uh, so, she's like, sure, we'll go. This is a 30-minute countdown until we can actually leave. Because you've got to say goodbye to people. And you're not allowed to, apparently. I, I, we had a bit of an argument. A friendly argument. Not like a fight. But... I don't see the problem when you're ready to leave somewhere where you've been all day and walking up and say, Hiya, sorry to interrupt, but we're getting off now. Just wanted to say goodbye and have a great day. Um, you're beautiful, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and thank you for everything. And then leaving. Emma thinks this is super rude if the bride is in a conversation which has been going on for like 25, 30 minutes. I don't think that's rude. Right? Am I wrong? I don't think so. I think it's fine. You're polite. You're just, well, not rude. I didn't think so. I mean, I've done that a ton of times. Like, if you need to go and you, need, you want to say goodbye, I don't think it's rude to just go up and say, you know, ah, oh, excuse me. Yeah, sorry to interrupt, but, you know, we're getting off now. Just let you know it's been great. We had to go pick up the kids, which is true. <laughs> Everyone was like, try to conjure up these mad lies. We'll say, we'll say, uh, we say we've got to get the kids. I was like, Emma, we do have to get the kids. Like... <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> we do have to get a kid. So you don't need to make up some fabricated story like you're quitting a job or you're calling in sick or something. We can just leave. Uh, but So she made me wait for half an hour because she didn't want to be rude until there was a pause in the bride's conversation. She was like a conversation sniper, right? So as soon as there was a pause, she like leapt in uh, to say goodbye. Uh, I just went to say goodbye to the groom and all that. Uh, got in the car. Apparently, and I imagine most of us here who own a car... We have automatic lights on the car, right? And we don't think about our lights ever. Turns out, at some point, my lights have been turned off from automatic, and my lights weren't on. But we were in such a well-lit area, because I was in a car park, uh, a well-lit car park at the hotel, and then we got into like a train of traffic, so we were really well-lit. Nobody noticed. Other drivers didn't even notify me that the lights were off. Nobody fucking noticed. So I get nearly home, and behind me, the police lights start going. Woo! Woo! I was like, oh my god, what the fuck? Uh, and I was like, oh shit. So, like, pulled over. Cop comes out, looks at me. I'm suited and booted, right? I'm fucking, I'm looking fly. And he goes, been drinking, have we, sir? No. And he goes, huh. I'm gonna need you to get out of your car. And come and sit in my car. I was like, oh my god, really? And Emma, like, goes into a panic. Like, as if we've murdered somebody. Right? She'd had a few drinks. She'd been on the champagne. So she, like, flew into, like, a panic. And definitely thought that I had a corpse in the back of the car. So I went and sat in the back of the police car. And he goes, uh, and what have you been doing today, sir? And I was like, oh, I've been at a wedding all day. It was, like, really cool. I, I was me. So I was like, I haven't done anything wrong, as far as I know. <laughs> so he goes, uh, are you aware your lights are off? I went, my lights are off. He says, yeah, your light's broken. I went, no, my light's off. So no one's notified me and I couldn't tell, but we were in well-lit streets. So he then made me get out of the car, walk back to my car, 
and turned the lights on. I went, oh, fuck. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't know. Like, everything's so well lit. I've not noticed it. Nobody splashed me or anything. So, yeah, they must have been turned off automatic. And he goes, I need you to step back into my car. I'm like, really? Okay, sure. It's like, have you ever done a breathalyzer? And I was like, no, I've never done a breathalyzer. He's like, well, I'm going to have to ask you to do a breathalyzer because you've clearly been out all day. Uh, you need to do a breathalyzer. So I said, being me, obviously, I was like, so do we go huge? Is that how we do it? Do we go huge? And you're like, what do you mean? I was like, do I go, <clears throat> or do I go, and it's like, no. <laughs> you just do a gentle, <laughs> you just do a nice gentle breathe. Look, man, there was clearly no crime that was worth fucking getting arsy about. And I hadn't been drinking. I had had one pie at one o'clock in the afternoon at the wedding toast. And then I'd been on J2O all day. So I was like, I, I was clearly going to pass, right? It was like Slice. It, honestly, it was like getting in a Slice game. I'm clearly going to win. So I'm going to have fun with it. So he was like, no, you do this. So he gets out the tube. He shows the machine. I was like, so how does it work? He's like, I'm going to give you um, like a countdown. Then you're going to start. And then I'm going to keep telling you to go until you need to stop. So you need a nice, steady stream of breath. So then I thought, well, now it's a competition. And now I want to be the longest blow into a breathalyzer that's ever existed. And so I got it. I went, <coughs> really, like, fleshed out the lungs a bit. And it starts beeping. And if anybody's ever done a breathalyzer, you'll know this. It starts beeping really fast. And then he went into what I can only describe as a world-first casting mode. And he goes, go, 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 stop. Like that. It was really bizarre. He, like, snapped into this gear immediately. And I was still going. He's like, you're done. I'm like, I'm going for the longest record, right? But there's no timer going. So then I call it quits because he's not been recording my time, which I thought was lazy. Uh, and then he checks it out, he checks it, right, right, you're flat zero. I was like, what do you mean? Like, IRL or on the breathalyzer? He's like, on the breathalyzer. And then he starts laughing, right? Then the cop is at ease. I'm not drunk. Uh, I, I, I forgot to put the fucking lights on. Whatever. Like, it's, you know, you're not going to jail. Uh, but I didn't know if it was a ticket. And then he, he went into, like, a spiel about how I could ticket you for this, and it'd be three points on your license. I was like, why are you threatening me now, bro? Like, we're chill, right? We're chilling. Why are you, like, threatening me? <laughs> He's like, I'm just letting you know, you're clearly fine. Uh, and there's no issue. So I'm just letting you know that what I could do is I could give you three points. I could ticket you for it and all this. And I was like, oh, okay. But you're not, though, right? You already told me you're not. Uh, and he said, like, well, no, I'm not going to. I'm like, okay. So what, can I go now? It's like, I'm just, just making you aware that you, you, you're, you're clearly relaxed. He wasn't a power trip. He was kind of a chill dude. He was like, I've got to read you this. I've got to read this out for you. It's how we put it, right? I'm exaggerating a little bit. He was actually totally fine. Uh, he was a nice cop. And then uh, I was like, okay. I get back in the car. Emma has called multiple people asking them if she's going to have to walk back to the house or can she get someone to pull, come and pick her up. Mike's been stopped by the police. As if I had just literally killed a granny. She's been on the phone to everybody. I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. I was like, all right, where are we going now? It's fine. It's totally fine. She's like, so you, you good? I'm like, yeah, we're good. We're good. The lights weren't on the car. That's all. And she's like, oh, okay. Are the lights on now? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I came back and I turned it on. And she's like, oh, okay. She's like relaxed then and got home. She thought, definitely thought I was a mad criminal. But that was my uh, Saturday evening, which was great. And then on Sunday, I cleaned the office. How cool is that? <laughs> this is why we scum sub for Scotland. Emma gets in a blind panic about a lot of things. The worst thing I've ever done in my life, I should tell you this, right? The, the biggest foul up I've ever made in my life is, is pretty bad, actually. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Um, but it was a pure accident. So, when we moved, I want to be totally clear on this. When we moved to our new house, where we wanted a family house, because we were planning to have kids, um, I updated everything. My driving license clearly showed our new address on it, right? Because this ended up being important later. One night, we've been out for dinner. We're chilling. Everything's good. I come home. And there's a letter at the door, on the door, like sellotape to the door, that bailiffs had been to my house. These are people who come into your house and repossess your shit. Um, and they were going to be back in the morning with a warrant to break in and take our shit. 
because I owed, apparently, £2,000 and I had missed a court date and uh, I was uh, in big trouble. And now, <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I was told, no, it wasn't a scam. It totally was not a scam. It was totally real. Uh, and it was something to do with my driving license. And I was like, uh, what the fuck? So we get in the car. We drive to the police station because Emma's in a panic. We drive to the police station. Uh, I, I turn up at the police station with Emma. I'm still like dressed for a night out and so is Emma. And I was like, we just received this. We don't know what's going on. We've been told to contact the police. What's happening? So apparently six months ago, I had got a speeding ticket somewhere. Somewhere near, somewhere near the motorway, I'd got a speeding ticket. But, uh, and I was getting three points. But they'd been sending shit to the wrong address. Even though my license was updated and done. Which meant that I had missed the parking, I missed the speeding ticket. Which then had told me to go to court. I had not arrived at court. So, what happened is, in the UK, you're allowed 12 points on your license before they take your license away, right? And then you have no driving license. Uh, so, I got three points for the speeding ticket, which I didn't know about. For not replying to the ticket, I got another three points. That's six. I had a clean license. And for not attending court, I got six points. And I didn't know about any of it. At all. Nothing. So, I'd lost my license. The problem is, technically, I had lost my license six months ago. And I've been accumulating fines since that day. I've been accumulating fines on this one. I think a speedy ticket's 50 quid. I haven't had a speedy ticket in years. I think it's a 50 quid fine. But I've been accumulating fines and missed court appearances and things like that. So now the fine was £2,000. and had now been passed to debt collectors. And I had had no driving license for six months. Now the police officer went, are you Mike Lamb? And I went, yeah. And he went, can you show me your driving license? So I showed him, which had my current address on it, which was not the same address that they had on their system. It's like, when did you update your driving license? I was like, when we moved, right? I did, I did my bureaucracy. I was a good boy. Went, right. Okay. And then he goes, did you drive here? And I went, yeah. And he looked at me and he went, did you drive here? Like this. And then he went, I went, no. <laughs> In the police station. I went, no. And he went, good because you don't have a driving license <laughs> he was a total bro this is clearly not the first time this has happened right this is clearly not the first time this has fucking happened and the fact that i had driven to the police station puts you in really good graces with the police just to be clear if you've done fucked up and you go and talk to them like what the fuck is going on they're generally pretty nice to you they're not stupid people so i was like no and he goes good because you haven't had a legal driving license in six months i was like why and he goes because you're banned from driving i'm like why and he's like, he went through it with me he's like so you did this this happened and this happened it gets worse than this by the way uh so i've been banned from driving for a year and had two thousand pounds to pay i did not have two thousand pounds so emma drove us home emma then left because she was in such a panic that the people were going to break down the house and she had to be there while they took our TV. They would take my computer. They would take everything out of the house. I mean, realistically, they could have just taken my GPU and they could have, we could have called it square, but they were likely to take more than that. Um, so she was, um, she threw in a panic and just left and went to her mother's. And I was like, is my life falling apart now? I was in a bit of a stress. So I called, I had to do the ultimate shameful thing is I had to call my mum. I had to call my mum. I did. I had to call my fucking mum. I had to call mummy. I was like, mum, mummy, I know I'm a grown up now and I'm about to have a family. And I, <laughs> I had to call my mum. I was like, mum, I've got no driving license. I'm not allowed to drive. I need to pay a bailiff £2,000 before tomorrow morning. She went, will you relax? I'll sort you out. It's fine. Uh, it paid me back and she sent it me there and then I paid it and then called Emma. I was like, it's paid. We're fine. I'm just not allowed to drive for six months. But then I said this again because I'm me. I went, in good news. <laughs> she went, what good news? She was like so panicked. I went, in good news. I've already served six months of my sentence. So it's not that bad. And I, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
because I was bad for a year, but I'd been driving for six months without knowing. So, you know, I'd already kind of served half my sentence. Really, when you think about it from that perspective, if you turn it on its head, say, we've paid the bill, we can pay it off whenever to my mom, and I've already served half my sentence. And she went, you're a fucking dickhead. So I'm on my way home. And she came home. <laughs> they didn't let you off? No, did they fuck? And they said that the, the decision was, it's done. You have to pay it. You can fight it in court. But he went like this. You can fight it. Good luck. I was like, right. Okay, I understand that face. Like, you can fight it. It's, well, <laughs> uh, court wouldn't care. Better to cut your losses. Exactly where I was. Exactly where I was Mind in my mindset. was like, look, frankly, this has been stressful enough. It's whatever. Six months without driving. I'm a YouTuber. I had no kids. All right. <laughs> you know, six months without driving. Emma could drive. Emma could drive the car. It's fine. Like, eh. It's all right. I, I can do six months. It's fine. It's fine. 2,000 quid, though. I mean, it was to my mother. I mean, I paid it off with interest. Uh, I, I gave her a holiday at the end of it because she pulled us right out of shit. I, I gave them a holiday when I could. I, say, I saved up, like, bits, like installments, but I kept it until I just gave them a holiday uh, to go somewhere, which was nice. Mum interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, she pulled me right out of the shit, right? She pulled me right out of the shit. Mummy deserves some fucking love. Mums, mums deserve some love at that point. She's a good mama. My mum is awesome. I, 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 my only sad thing about my family is I don't see them anywhere near enough. They don't live anywhere near me. When I had kids, my mum moved to Qatar. That's hard to get babysitters, you know? She just, she moved to Qatar. That's tough. That's tough. That's not somewhere you can visit at the weekend, you know? That's not something you can do. So it's it's tough. Yeah, Qatar. Uh, her new husband, uh, her new husband is a very niche, not architect, but he builds hospitals. It's a really niche job, really well paying. Like he, he does well. But uh, basically, what happens is he gets headhunted by comp like by countries that need new hospitals, and he goes there, designs and oversees the construction. That's what he does. Yeah, he's, yeah, a simple term would be project manager, but very niche for hospitals. So he needs to be, you know, he knows about all the sterilization systems, the air ducts, how it needs to be, and how much equipment. He basically plays theme hospital IRL, two point. <laughs> he basically makes two point hospital IRL. I'm better at it, but I'm not recognized or certified, which is a bit of a bummer. But generally speaking, he plays two point hospital IRL. Uh, and uh, does it? Is he a gamer? He is not a gamer. He has no understanding of what I do, like at all. <laughs> he has no understanding of what I do at all. Neither does my mother. My mother makes does not understand, especially as like the business has grown over the years. For me, with my fucking blue yeti snowball mic in the upstairs bedroom, and then getting a couch. I'm being like really proud of myself because we could afford a couch and then a big deal of buying like a capture card like you know it's the event. and now we're she's visited the office and she's like I just don't get what it is that you do I don't know so like you have people working here now like yeah 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 I mean it's Chris but you know he works he does his thing he does his things can afford a couch <laughs> you've come a long way from being a telemarketer and a criminal yeah pretty much the only time I've interrupted the police when I became a hit and run victim. Oof. Oofers. Oofers. Show her the crawlers. I mean, even my wife's not ready for the crawlers and she understands what we do. Like, and she's not ready for the crawlers. I don't think that's a good idea. I've only ever really had... I've had a couple of bad interactions with the police. Because I was a manager of a nightclub, I had to deal with the police a lot. So, not too bad. Hello. Good morning. Looking good, team. Where do I get the elephant outfit from? I'm just asking for a friend. I don't, like, want it. Well, you know. It's from a world boss? What, like, she? <laughs> That's it. It's just something we might need at some point, right? It's just something we might need at some point. It's like Chi Boy Thavner. Okay, I need Jakey Whiskers on that. I need Jakey to be rocking and rolling, you know? 
I need Jakey to keep me going. I need Jakey to keep me going. I was strip searched by the police because uh, I looked like a drug dealer around town. So that's because I was wearing a beanie. I've done some really stupid things in my life, for sure. I've definitely driven while smoking weed, which was really fucking dumb. Uh, I've had the police car behind me and decided to throw it out of the window uh, and then got stopped. But they were just like, just go home. Go home. I definitely did that. and I never did that again after that point. I, it was when I definitely thought I was cooler than ice. Yeah, I thought I was super cool. Like, you know when you're at that age where you think literally a, mil an, a shell could hit me in the face and I'd be fine? It was definitely at that age. Yeah, for sure. It's so dumb. I mean, I was like 17, 18, something like that. 17, 18. Uh, it depends who you get. Police are people. It just depends who you get. It's literally that. So, like, uh, okay. I need paint. Well, we've got six minutes until leap. All right, I need paint. I need to describe. This is the worst interaction I ever had with the police. This is the worst one. This is the worst interaction I ever had with the police. And it, it still to this day, it annoys the shit out of me. Okay, right. Okay. Yeah, this is, this is pretty accurate, actually. All right. So, here is the best uh, kebab house in where I live. Ashton Underline at the time. Uh, here is the nightclub I manage called The Witchwood, right? <laughs> Relative to scale. Now, this was my blunder. This is a one-way street. Yeah, this is a one-way street. But what you're supposed to do is come down here and then make a right, okay? So I, I would leave work. And so what I would do is I actually, I need a bigger thing. Uh, okay, I need a bigger thing. My house or flat where I lived is, this is the pub where I work, or the, the nightclub, the Witchwood that I managed. And here's where I live. But these, my house had, because I was a student managing a nightclub, I had what would be a lack of kebabs in my home. All right? Uh, I had a lack of kebabs. So once we finished work, it would be 2 a.m. usually, 2, 2.30 when we cleaned up. So it would have been a Saturday night. We close the bar at midnight. We keep the place open till 1. And then you've got an hour of cleanup and then half an hour of chilling and chatting with everybody uh and everybody wanted kebabs so me and my flatmate jump in the car to go and provide kebabs and then there's a party to be had at my flat which was the typical saturday we'll go get kebabs then we'll come back to my place and we'll have a party till sunday morning easy game easy life so i have to drive down this road what you're supposed to do is take an eight minute and i mean eight minute detour by going this way going this way, and then you circle around the entire town to get back onto this road to come here. So what we always did every single night was drive down this road and park the car here. There's no parking on this road here because this place is a bank and they had no parking. So we parked the car there. That is what we did. Just walk. Uh, I mean, I've still got to get the car home and I'm bringing food back, you know? Uh, so it would make more sense to go here, grab the food, and drive back to the house with the food and park there. Uh, so <laughs> that's what we did. We'd been out during the day, so my car was at work. It wasn't at the house. Uh, so I'm in the kebab house. This is me. I'm in the kebab house. I'm very happy. Uh, I'm in the kebab house. When a police car pulls up here right outside the window i instantly know i'm fucked when i'm here i instantly know that i'm fucked i am completely screwed i know what's about to happen as you all know what's about to happen but is it a big deal well that's going to be a question that everybody's going to answer is xp pots a big deal again it depends on your moral compass is this a big deal at 2 30 in the morning when everybody's gone home is this a big deal i think not the police guy in charge did think it was a big deal. So he comes in and he says, 
Oi, 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 oi. Whose car's that parked outside? I say, that's me. And he goes, have you been drinking some? Because we stank of beer. Obviously, we've been working uh, working the bars all night. We stink of beer. Uh, as does my flatmate. And I go, uh, no, I, would, I, I guess I would have been 19 at this point. And I go, uh, no, 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 we work at the Witchwood. Uh, we're just grabbing some food for everybody. For after, We've just finished, finished closing the bar, so we're, we're just getting some food for everybody. He goes, do you know why I'm here? And I go, uh, it's because my car's parked the wrong, wrong way around. And he goes, that's right, Sonny. Uh, why is that? So it's because we've just come from the Witchwood, and it's an eight-minute detour. So we just parked on the corner here because it's 2.30 in the morning, and there's no cars on the street, and blah, 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 blah. And he goes, but well, that's not the law, is it, Sonny? And he keeps calling me Sonny. He really started to get on my fucking nerves. He keeps calling me Sonny. I'm also, like, probably pretty tired. I'm just being generally a dick at this point. Uh, so he goes, uh, if I see your car doing this again, then I'm going to take your car off you, blah, 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 blah. He's got, you know, and you could end up losing your license, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Like, Relax. Uh, and he's like, and he, he goes on the full thing about he's gonna fuck me up. And I, I, I was, I was pretty, um, I was, I was a bit of a dick. Uh, I was like, right, okay, cool, just, but you, you, obviously nothing's happened coming of this. Let's just call it a day. The uh, pizzas and kebabs finished for everybody, uh, and uh, I was like, I've got all the food. My flatmate's carrying the food, and I'm like, okay. And he's still lecturing me. I mean, he lectured me for a good three or four minutes. And then I, we sit in the car. He says, "Fair enough." He says, "You know, right, get on your way." Go, go, go. He said the car. But one thing I did, which was a really big mistake, as I, as I was closing my door, I'm sat in the driver's seat and I'm closing the door. I, I look at my flatmate and I go, for fuck's sake, man, as I'm closing the door. And then he grabs my door. My light went off. He grabs my door and says, what did you just say? And I went, I was just saying, for fuck's sake. I was honest. I just went, for fuck's sake. And then he kneeled down, leaning into my car. Why is this going off? He, kne- he kneels down into my car and goes, is that any way to speak to a police officer? <laughs> I-, I was, like, getting pretty fucking heated at this point. I went, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to him, and I didn't say anything bad about you. I was saying we fucked up, right? For fuck's sake. I was like, what a pain in the ass. And he goes, swearing need a police officer. Are you asking for trouble? Because I'm letting you off really nicely. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not asking for trouble. And at this point, I'm like just looking at my steering wheel, just waiting for this moment to be over <laughs> in my life. I mean, you know when you get to that point, you're like you're just waiting for it to be over. It's like being on a 16-hour flight, and all you can do is just wait for it to be over. It will be over. Just wait for it to be over. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And he goes, I'm writing down your registration. I'll be keeping my eye out for you. Because I assume you drive around here a lot, don't you? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. And he's like, right. Do something wrong again, son. Because I'll remember you. And I'm like, this is fucking ridiculous. We're getting kebabs at the pizza house. And it's, now, it's now nearly three in the morning. I remember the clock ticking. And I remember seeing it. It was like 2.50 something. I'm like, it's like three in the morning, bro. We've been working for seven hours in a bar on a Saturday, just chill, fuck out, and deal with criminals. Uh, But, uh, I I mean, I did fuck up. There's no getting away from that. I did fuck up. (sighs) 